356. It's one of my favorite songs. Not one of your favorite songs? Oh. First, second, and last, let's try. You want to stand? You want to seat? You can be seated if you want, if you're tired, but if you want to stand, stand up. Here we go. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles, he is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly an end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me. Over the world, the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus alone. All right, have a seat. Let's do, let me see, let's do uh, 357. <laughs> I knew you knew I was going to do that. That's why I did it. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, let me say a word about the offering tonight. Gary's got his plate in his hand back here. Don't forget that we're starting the LJC offering for our Jubilee for next year. I'm explaining this for uh, uh, those of you who weren't here. Uh, check your dollars every week, every time you find a dollar bill with either in that circle or the first letter of the serial number, if it has an L, a J, or a C, we all are, well, not everybody, this is not something we're making people do, of course, but it's just a fun way to, to, to set money aside for the Jubilee. So if you get a dollar bill that has an L, a J, or a C. Uh, I, I happen to look on uh, a $20 bill. And you know what? They don't have the letters in that circle. No. And if the, the, the serial number actually has two letters, I think, at the beginning of it. So the L, LJC uh, dollar bill offering, don't forget. But mark it if you get it. So, uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to tell Carolyn from now on whatever bills come in for the offering, check all the dollar bills. Many of them that have the LJC we will take it out and put it for that, too. All right, 357, we'll do the first and the last verse. <clears throat> Don't forget to knock now. Now, now listen, uh, we, must, we should ask and seek, keep knocking at the door. Three good knocks on something hard. If you can't find anything, reach over and get your, your uh, yeah, there you go. That's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> first and last verses, here we go. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Is there aught beyond his power? He commanded us to open wide our mouth, ask our needs this, Gary. We should ask and seek. Keep knocking at the door at Jesus' feet. We have not. Our needs 
because we do not plead with Jesus. Now, I know you don't understand this principle, but if you follow me, I know Janice where she's at because I can hear the music. So if you follow me, we'll all be together. I know that's a hard concept, but <laughs> last verse, here we go. We may ask in Jesus' name or ask in faith, pray united or alone. We may pray with trembling faith, but pray we should, we should ask till it is done. We should ask and seek. Keep knocking at the door at Jesus' feet. We have not our needs because do not. Oh, goodness. I don't even know where she's at sometimes. 162. First and last verse. 162. Do what? 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 You a light bulb? If you are, you're not very bright. <laughs> yeah, okay. All I heard was what? <laughs> First and last. To God be the glory, great thing he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath taught us, great things. Through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, come to the Father. Hath done. How about a testimony? Gary. Uh, well, if it's if it's in an envelope and marked. Uh, yeah. Keep it separate tonight. I'll have to check see how she wants to do that. But keep it separate tonight. I thought he had a testimony. I was going to say, I don't think I've ever heard Gary give a testimony yet. Maybe once or twice. Barbara. Amen. What's your name again? Miss, I don't have one. Well, amen. Amen. First time in how many years? 14 years. Well, amen. We had a preacher preach on blind Bartimaeus last week. Maybe yeah, that would be good. Anybody else? Well, we are all 
how glad you're back. And we've had to watch what we said about you while you were gone. Now we can just let loose. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Anybody else? All right, get your prayer list out if you have one. I don't have one of the churches. I'm just going to go off of the uh, new one that I started Sunday. So if you have a old one, you can just add these to it. I guess I ought to update it next week if I don't forget. True confession. One night, one of those preachers preached on either Nehemiah or Ruth. I can't remember which book. You know, it took me five minutes to figure out where Ruth was in the Bible. I'm going, Joe, where are you when I need you? <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Ruth. Those momentary mental lapses. Senior moments are becoming more regular. Oh, half time. Half time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. My dad said, you say he, he suffered from C, CRN. Can't remember nothing. Okay, let me tell you, give you what I have here. Uh, Darlene fell and has some pain in her shoulder, so pray for her. Lila Thompson did not have her surgery on um, Sunday, but she did have it later in the week, I think Tuesday morning, and did fine. Uh, Autumn has an unspoken request. Uh, Isabel's brother Ray has some heart problems that they're trying to diagnose. Betty is still having some problems. If you follow her on Facebook, she's been to a couple or three doctors and has some more to go to. <clears throat> We're praying for Fran's son, Danny. Uh, Lois, the mom. I saw Lois today, and she actually is holding up as well as can be expected, I think. Um, I, I told her, and I've, I've told you folks, I, I cannot imagine that. Uh, and yet God does give grace, and she's doing well. Talk to Dr. Bob today. Dr. Bob did indeed go to Spencer's on uh, Saturday, like I told you, Sunday morning. He preached both services Sunday. He said about a 30-minute sermon both times, but then Monday morning they went back to Indiana because he was hurting so bad. He starts his chemo, I think he told me, next week. And that's the oral pill. They're going to give him a PET scan and all kinds of stuff and then figure out exactly which uh, uh, oral med medication to give him. So we need to continue to pray for him. Uh, there's some uh, folks that one, one has asked me, but it, it applies to many other people, I'm sure, uh, that, would, that, that wants us to pray that their children would, would get back into church. And so let's begin to pray about that. And then got a call this afternoon about 5.15, maybe a little earlier, uh, from Gina uh, Priest. Uh, she was having some chest discomfort on and off all day, so she wanted to go up to Coatesville. And Carolyn did not even come home, just went straight there and took her to Coatesville to the Veterans Hospital. And they have since that time transferred her over to Brandywine for some more checks. They're not sure what it is. Uh, so pray for her. Carolyn said one doctor thought that it might be heart. Another pr uh, doctor thought it might be a reaction to a new cholesterol medication she's on. I've never heard of cholesterol medication giving you heart or chest pains, but it was in the upper left side of her chest radiating into her back. So pray for her. Any other new prayer requests you want to share or updates on any of them? Rich? You'll be on the road extra trips all week long. Pray for those kids, man. Wrestling. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wrestling? Sunday? You get a note from your mama. <laughs> uh, Patrick is out of town this week, so we can put him down for travel also. He's in Abilene, Texas. Fort, Fort something. What's out there, Butch? Fort. I don't think that's Abilene. Fort, Fort Killian or something, maybe? Huh? So, Pat, for travel also. Anybody else? Mom? Mom? Which one? Augie? August. Double ear infection. He 
cunning canine. I know that's not how you spell that, but that's all right. <laughs> Fort Dice? Um, maybe. Near Abilene, huh? Whatever. God knows where he's at. Anybody else? Barbara? Okay. Well, all of those are on the regular list. Okay, I won't take them off when I add these to it next week if I get caught up. <coughs> we went, uh, or I went down Monday night, taught school down there Monday night, <coughs> ended up with four students. And the first class in the morning I have four students, and in the next class I have 11 students. And you would think, well, what difference does that make? Well, when I give them a, a term paper, that makes a lot of difference because <laughs> I have to read them all to correct them. So pray for the school down there too, if you would. And I, I was amazed. Some of the new kids that have come in down there, one young lady, I, I saw her two weeks ago when the first day of school, <clears throat> and she was so timid and so shy, couldn't hardly hear her. She talked so quiet. And so I'm down getting ready for my evening class, and, and she's running a vacuum cleaner, singing at the top of her lungs, and had just a beautiful, I mean, just drop-dead beautiful voice. Um, the girl that was here and played the piano, her sister's there for the first time, first semester this, this year. She was on the piano the same night. Beautiful job playing the piano. And there's one or two other young ladies there that sing, and, and I'm just amazed that God brings all that talent into that little school. I don't know why I told you all that, but I guess there's a purpose. <laughs> Joshua. Joshua. They want to report on your throat. You could say that. And nothing further to say, as my mom would say. Anybody else? Amen. All right, Rich, lead us in prayer, if you would. Remember as many as you can. Amen. All right, we're going to be in Genesis again tonight. <clears throat> uh, it should not take me long to find that book of the Bible since it's the first one, <clears throat> chapter 15, and I don't think I'll have trouble finding that since it comes between 16 and 14. <clears throat> we have uh, folks that are posting on Facebook that I've really started to dislike. A couple of them have said this is their favorite season of the year. Well, this is my second most unfavorite season of the year. Everybody likes fall because of all the beauty of the trees, you know, when the leaves start to change. But in my mind, it's not just the beauty of the leaves changing. I like that part, but everything starts to die. And in winter, you have those months, short or long, uh, I've heard three or four different forecasts this year that some of, somebody said that it was going to be the worst uh, wet, w wet winter we've ever had for a long time. And others are saying it's going to be one of the driest winters we've ever had in a long time. 
which always goes back to the same point. None of them know what you're talking about. Uh, the, the, down south one time I saw a uh, hillbilly uh, weather forecaster. Have you ever seen those? It's a rock that hangs on a, on a piece of stick. And if you see the rock and touch it, that means the sun's shining and if it's hot. If it's cold, it means the sun's not shining. And if it's wet, it means that the, it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> it's as accurate as the weather forecast, isn't it? Uh, hurricanes. How many years now have they said we're going to have more hurricanes than ever? And we haven't had a hurricane hit the mainland and I think, how long has it been? Ten years or eight years, something like that. So they don't know what's going on. Anyway, in the study of the, the life of Abraham, uh, I've mentioned to you, I don't know if I've ever mentioned to you all at one time, there's, there's really four or five significant players in the book of uh, Genesis. One of them, of course, is Adam, and another one is Noah, and another one is Abraham, and another one is Joseph. Between Abraham and Joseph, most of the uh, um, book of Genesis is taken up with their stories. There's more stories there about them than there is about uh, anything else in, in total. So when we're studying the life of Abraham, we've picked a good subject, I believe, because there's so much there for us to learn. And I hope that it's been interesting to you as we've studied it. And I hope that tonight will also be interesting for you as we study it. In Genesis chapter 15, the first six verses, who wants to volunteer to read them? One to six. Barbara? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Chapter fifteen. Here we're going to see a story of, of God speaking to Abram. Uh, the interesting thing about God speaking to people is really kind of said or talked about or expressed or illustrated in a Dr. Seuss story. Uh, years ago, there was a story written, and the name of the story was Horton Hears a Who. You guys remember that story? Horton Hears a Who. Well, what was Horton? Horton's an elephant, right? And so he kept hearing this little voice, this real quiet, real, nobody else heard it. They thought he was crazy. And finally, all the little people in Whoville got together and said stuff all at one time to make it louder so some of the other animals heard him too. But in that little story, Horton heard the who because he was paying attention to what was going on. And once he understood that somebody was speaking, even in a very small voice, he started to listen for that small voice. And, you know, sometimes we, we forget as adults and as Christians who have been uh, saved for a good while, we, we get in the habit of not listening to the still small voice of God. He still speaks to us all the time, not in an audible voice, but through the Word of God. He will move in your heart and teach you and speak to you and tell you things from the Word of God. One of the um, uh, songs that the, the boys, Jerry Harris's boys sing, uh, talks about uh, the, the stilling of the storm. And the song says something like this. It says, when he stepped out on the sea and stilled the storm, he didn't say a word. But my heart heard uh, clearly what he said to me. Now, that's the way it is with us. 
You, you, you can come into a service and hear a preacher preach, and you may go out and say, well, I really didn't get much out of that. And the person sitting next to you hear the same message and go out and get a lot out of the same message. And that's because sometimes God is speaking in a very small voice, still voice, and uh, we, some f- folks listen more closely than others. So tonight we're going to see this truth about God speaking to Abram. Uh, in verse 1, there's an interesting uh, thing happen. It says, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, what's the next two words? Fear not. That's the first time fear not is mentioned in Scripture. First time anybody has been told fear not, especially from heaven. Now, I'm not sure that it's the first time men ever had fear, because I'm sure when Adam and Eve left the garden, they, they had a fearful concept or fearful attitude about what exactly was going to happen now. And I'm pretty sure that when Lot went after his uh, nephew who was taken captive, that there was some fear there in some of the people's hearts and also in Lot's heart. And all the, all the times that we think that there's never fear, there is. Uh, we, we have this problem. We want to be Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry. Never afraid of anything. Uh, I read today on Facebook, the best karate lesson in the world is walking into a spider web with your face. Think that would work? Yeah, for a lot of people, it's, get that thing off me. Well, we all have fears, and yet God has this way of wanting to calm our fears. And so right in the beginning, we can say that big point number one Uh, Isabel's not here, but if you're taking notes, big point number one is a word about Abram's fear. He had just returned from that great military victory that we read about in uh, chapter 14 last week, and he had uh, gained a a great prestige and honor from the people of the area because of the victory that they won and his leadership. He had turned down uh, a great um, amount of of, uh, bounty Uh, from that uh, victory because he did not want to have anybody say that his wealth came from the world, but rather he wanted to be able to brag on how God had blessed him. So the thing that we can start with here is when we have fears, we're just like Abraham. When we have things that concern us, we're just like Abraham. Uh, I told you all about uh, the the Jubilee last week. I I told you I was scared to death for weeks before and Sunday morning, I told Carolyn I was excited, and she said, I thought you were scared. And I said, excited sounds more spiritual. Well, you know, whether it sounds spiritual or not, we have fears that confront us from time to time. We're no different than Abraham, and it may not be over ex- the exact things that Abraham feared, but the point that we can learn from Abraham is that there's a peace that comes from knowing God. When you have a fearful activity taking place in your life, and God moves in alongside of you. I want, I want you to notice here. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham. This was not a time when Abraham was seeking the Lord. This was a time when the Lord came alongside Abraham because he knew he needed him. God always does that for us. When we are at our worst times and the bottom of the pit and fearful and about to be overcome, if you'll listen, if you'll watch, if you'll be aware you'll know that God's presence is with you. He has promised that. Jesus said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Uh, Do we accept the promises of God as uh, yea and amen or not? Uh, If we're wise, we will accept the promises of God. Um, Often through the Bible, you will see this fear not. Often when angels appear to people, they'll tell them fear not. But we have nothing to fear. In Timothy, it says, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I think it's 2 Timothy 1.7 if you want to check out and mark it in your Bible. But that's a good verse to memorize. When you be start to become fearful, just tell Satan or tell, what, tell yourself, tell whatever situation you're in, speak it aloud and just tell them. Tell it. Tell yourself. God's not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if God hasn't given me fear, where is fear coming from? Either the world, the flesh, or the devil, Right? And so we need to constantly remind ourselves of that. He tells us, fear not. When the disciples were in the ship that we've talked about in the last week or so, two or three different times, uh, they, they were, should not have been afraid because he was there with them. So there's that peace that comes from knowing God when we're fearful. 
But then there's also that protection that comes from knowing God. Adam, uh, Adam, Abram in this situation was not so certain that there was not going to be a retaliatory attack that there was not going to be these, these um, uh, armies come back and tr try to get even and take their stuff back again. He had no assurance of that. They did defeat them and ran them off, but that doesn't mean that they're never going to show up again. In our lives, how many times have we won a victory and thought we had defeated whatever thing it was that we were trying to defeat? Lo and behold, six months later, it comes back just as strong as it was the first time. Uh, I, I would say this about smoking. I watched my dad all my life try to quit smoking, and there was times he, he thought he had it licked for a month or two months, and all of a sudden he's smoking again because that came back, that, that desire and that habit kept clawing at him. And so we, we should understand that simply because we gain a victory today over something doesn't mean that victory is going to be there tomorrow and the next day. Satan never gives up. He always comes back at us, and he tries to attack but when God moved in alongside Abraham, he knew that the Lord's presence was there. Uh, Psalm 34, 7. Rich, you want to read that for us? I see you got your Bible out there. And Butch, will you look up for me Colossians 3, 3? Psalm 34, 7, Rich. All right, what's round about mean to you? The angels of the Lord camp round about him. Surrounded, right? Uh, they surround us. Uh, there's instances in Scripture where this took place. Uh, I have heard testimonies from missionaries. I'll share the one. I can't remember where or who said it. But they said that they were lost in the, in the jungle one night, and they were afraid that they were going to be attacked by the... the uh, tribes in the area and they were not harmed at all if I'm thinking right their, their vehicle broke down and when they uh, finally got to the camp of the Indians that they were trying to reach and they asked them about it and got to talking about the night they spent out in the jungle the Indians said to them who were all of those people around your camp who was it it was angels see and so God does not leave us without protection. Uh, Butch, can you read Colossians 3, 3 for me, please? So we're hid in Christ. Is that not a protection? See, Satan can't get to us. I've used this illustration before, but I'm going to use it again. When I was about four, uh, we lived in a project called Swan Meadows down in Aberdeen. It was a uh, project that was built during the, during the Second World War for uh, soldiers and also workers that came in for civil service. And after the war, they used it mostly for just rental housing. People bought up large tracts of it. And so when we lived there, in the middle of that project, about five houses down from us, was the, the playground. Well, we had a, a bully at the playground, and I, w I would go down there, and he'd run me off. And so one day my mama told me, she says, go, go on down and play in the playground. I said, I don't want to. Well, how come? And I told her, I forget the kid's name. He's always picking on everybody and throwing you off the monkey bars and all that. And so I didn't really want to go down there and get beat up again. So she made my older brother go with me. And you know what I had that day? I had a protector. I had a bodyguard. Now, my brother's not much of a bodyguard anymore. After I got to be about 12, I was bigger and heavier and a better fighter than he was, but that's another story. But he was my protector. And that's what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're hid in him. When Satan comes against us, if we recognize that he cannot get through Christ, he cannot get through Christ to get to us. And we are protected by the hand of God. There's another thing that we need to recognize here. The prize that comes from knowing God. What, what had he achieved now? He had been given great riches because he had been obedient to God. We've studied that through the past few weeks, how his flocks and herds multiplied, how he was blessed by God in, in almost, it seems like, every endeavor that he undertook. Even when he went down to Egypt, God brought him out with more than he took in. He was blessed even in his disobedience. Now, don't think that that's the way God always does it when we're disobedient. If you think that, just remember the story of the prodigal son who lost everything and ended up in a pig pen. 
But in some cases, God will bless and keep you even when you're disobedient. So he had been given great wealth and great riches even in the situation that he found himself in. Romans 8, 17. Louise, you want to read that? We have so much in Christ. We have experienced God's love and mercy and grace and salvation and forgiveness.